Don't tell your mother Kiss one another Die for each other We're cold for the summer What's up guys? Um Yeah, I was wanting to do a video Um On this uh, because I've come across a few of Mr. Repsion's uh, videos. Now, before I go any further, let me just be honest. I watch Mr. Repsion every so often. He's a large YouTube follower. Er, not YouTube follower. He's a large YouTube user and... He's, you know, obviously very popular amongst a lot of people. And from time to time, there are some things that I agree with, and then there's some times where he royally pisses me off. This is going to be one of those times where he royally pisses me off. And one of the things that he was basically talking about was the issue with the Cecil the Lion and the Confederate flag. Now... Let me just get this out of the way right to begin with. The idea about the Cecil the Lion, I could care less about. I think it's a distraction and everything else, and I think it plays right into the hearts of, you know, social justice warriors, animal rights activists. Not that, that the animal rights activism is a bad thing, but when you start getting overly militant about it, and ELF and that sort of crap about it, that's when I start kind of having a big problem with it. Um... So, I mean, yes, the idea that, that a lion has died, has been poached illegally is horrible. I think the whole idea of killing innocent animals pretty much anywhere, you know, for the, sa the sake of sport is just deplorable. I think it's absolutely despicable and asinine, and I think the people that do it ought to be shot in the head themselves. But... As, but as far as, like, killing an animal for the purpose of being able to provide for your family or something like that, that I don't have a problem with. The issue with the Cecil the Lion thing is obviously that he po that this dentist didn't give two fucks and poached a, a, you know, popular tourist attraction lion in another country. However, the Zimbabwean government doesn't really give a crap because they're too busy fighting corruption, sex trafficking, all sorts of other crap. They don't have the time to b bother with it. President Obama is, you know, a people pleaser and he's a friggin' uh, bourgeois, you know, play on the emotion sort of, you know, president. But even President Obama and our government don't have the time you know, to be investing in searching for some, some asshole, you know, it, they've got too many problems worrying about, you know, the national budget, <coughs> which by the way is, uh, coming up soon, uh, so maybe y'all in Congress can get off your asses and do something about that and try not to send us into a, into another government shutdown, Ted Cruz, um, so yeah, it's one of those issues that I find that I find is really nothing more than a distraction so that our government can probably pass some shady stuff behind closed doors and frankly I'm not I, I really I saw the Cecil the Lion thing popping up in my news feed all the damn time and there was a few people asking me personal friends and followers and stuff like that what's your opinion on Cecil the Lion I really I mean it's deplorable they're despicable per you know people that do it for sport are despicable human beings that ought to be shot but as far as my opinion on it I really don't care I really don't I you know I feel bad that this this lion's dead but I really don't care folks I mean a lion is really the least of my problems and my concerns because my issues are more political and not social media bound I guess is how I could say it anyway yeah my, my, my issues are focus more on what's going on in the real world you know knock on knock on the ball anyway um, so yeah 
I guess that's a good metaphor, but what's really going on in the real world, that is my biggest concern. What's going on in, you know, with the issue with uh, ISIS and the, um, another good example was the UK elections that went on earlier this year. Um, before long, I'm going to be talking more and more probably about the U.S. elections because I live in the U.S. and that concerns me. Um, you know, the issue going on with the possible rise of Golden Dawn in Greece and a lot in the EU crisis. Those are things that I'm concerned about. Issues going on in Japan with Japan, China, Korea, the Philippines, Vietnam, all that sort of bullshit going on between all of them. That concerns me. Um, the fact that millions of people are dying in third world countries due to capitalism, starving to death, being, you know, having, you know, little to no access to health care, and if they can, how do they afford it, and different issues like that. It's my, my concerns are more on a global scale and also towards more of a third world scale than they are really worrying about first world problems. And that's exactly what this Cecil the Lion is. It happened in a third world country, but the concerns are a first world problem. And, you know, it's, or first world concerns, anyway. And I just don't have the time to, the extra time to be devoted to something I really don't have much of a concern about. So that took up about six and a half minutes, and that basically is all I'm going to do, pretty much to, uh, I'm going to give to that subject. Um, because what I wanted to get into was also the issue that he talked about on the Confederate flag. Now, I've talked plenty on the Confederate flag. Many of you have seen it. Um, some of you got very pissed about it. And I apologized for the arrogance in that video. Um, I mean, right down to the wire, folks, my personal opinion on the Confederate flag is still my personal opinion, and I'm not going to apologize for my personal opinion and my personal views on it. I, again, my opinion, my opinion only, I view the Confederate flag as I do the Nazi flag. I view it as a symbol of racism. I view it as a, as a symbol of hatred and bigotry and ignorance. Of you. I view it as... Nazism. I view it as, I view it as a lot of different things. I view it as a, and most of all, in the in high up there, I view it as a symbol of fascism, and that's my personal opinion. You can agree and you can disagree with me on that. That's that's me. That's my personal opinion. I am a Marxist-Leninist, and one of the things that I find deplorable is the Confederate flag. I think that, it, like the Nazi flag, it should be reserved to the history museums and pretty much nothing else. I think, I mean, you know, you can have memorabilia for personal use, or even if you are a spiteful, per, you know, hateful person that, say you are a neo-Nazi and you have a neo-Nazi flag, you know, and you hile Hitler and all kinds of other shit that's you know in in your personal home. That in your personal home, that's one thing. On your in your backyard, okay. In the middle of uh, flying above a Capitol building, no, no, just no. I don't believe that it serves any function to be flying above a capitol building. In fact, the only thing I think that should be flying above any building is, well, personally, in my opinion, is state flags. I don't really think that the U.S. flag even serves a purpose to fly over it, but just for the sake of humoring people, the U.S. flag, even though it's flown through some very genocidal and racist times as well, it's, you know, as well as the fact that it flew over internment camps. Um, it, it, that's one of those things that, you know, that, that it's still, it, 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 let's put it this way. It's the flag that came out as the winner. Thusly, it should be the only flag flying above government buildings. And state flags is the only other thing. And 
if your state happens to be one of those that has the Confederate flag on it, fine, I'll give you that concession. Let it fly freely. Personally, I think you should change your flag, but I'm also not going to go being a militant person on that. I, I mean, I can give concessions just as much as the next guy. That's my thing. Personally, if I had it my way, the only flag that I'd be flying anyway would be the original bear flag, you know, like the one that's above my head. Um, that's the only, I mean, that's my personal opinion. Um, but basically what Mr. Epsion was saying is that he doesn't give a care. That's fine. Where you got arrogant was where you started saying that, you know, they was, maybe not arrogance the right word, where he got really to the point was saying that, you know, he believes in individual freedom. That's fair, that's fine. I, too, believe in individual freedom. I don't believe, though, that that individual freedom gives you the right to, you know, use that hate symbol I don't think that hate speech and hate symbols should be, well, I don't think that it personally should be hiding behind the shroud of freedom of speech, because I find that rather hypocritical. How can you have an, a place of free speech when the people that are spouting this hate speech, how, how can you have hate speech in free speech when the people that are, that are freely allowed to let their hate speech go is being used to oppress people and oppress their freedoms? and has historically been used to oppress people's freedoms. I mean, neo-Nazis get to hide behind their behind freedom of speech all the time, but what did the Nazis do, and what do they represent? They represent a totalitarian ideology meant to oppress a whole selection of people. In fact, the only people that have freedom is white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, or in their case, Aryans. That's the only people that actually have freedom, and even under that, they don't actually really have freedom, because if they happen to step a toe outside of the ideology, they get shot, or have some violent action brought against them. Now, be be fair, the you know, it doesn't always happen that way. Some are also just given other menial tasks. But in the co the course of in the core part of totalitarian ideologies and totalitarian regimes is that they oppress people's freedom. So how can there be free speech for something that is not that that doesn't espouse freedom? That's what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of convolutedness that goes in with that. We go on this ramble around all day long personal opinion, though, is that I don't believe that, I mean, if you want to have, have that damn thing on your, on your pickup, on your pickup truck and your car and anything else, fine, go ahead. It makes you look like an asshole, but go ahead. I have no problem with it. I really don't. But I do have a problem with it waving above, you know, waving out in public for in, you know, at least in, over government buildings. I have a problem with that. I don't believe that it should be there. I think that it should, that, you know... In fact, I've gotten to the point where my personal belief is that as long as it's not flying over a public building and possibly out in your front lawn, that's, um, that's one thing. If it's in the privacy of your home, if it's on your car, knock yourself out. Personally, while I am a Marxist, my family does have, you know, people that did come over here from Germany and people that fought against the Germans. Because of that, one of my family members has a copy of Mein Kampf. One of my family members has a Nazi flag. One of my fam uh, family members has an old uh, um, lapel pin. It's, you know, memorabilia is fine to have, and especially it's fine to have for historical purposes and value. When used, though, for your own personal viewpoint, however, 
that's when it actually becomes a real issue. So, you know, the way I look at it, if you support the Confederate flag and you're not a racist dickhead, good. Fine. I don't really... I really kind of see it as kind of... I you know ironic and, fu and ironically funny, but I don't really see. You know, but you know I don't. I guess I don't really see a problem with it in per for personal consumption. I guess. But as long, it, it's just that Mr. Repsion had a way of putting it that really pissed me off, and I think that you know personally there's a few ways he could have gone about it a lot better probably just as a lot of, uh, in a way, I probably could go about this video a lot better. Um, but point is, that's my viewpoint on the lion, that's my viewpoint on the Confederate flag. whoop de fucking do Um, what else has been going on this summer, just so I can clear the air here? Um, Caitlyn Jenner. My, here's my thing. Is Caitlyn Jenner a hero? I don't know if hero is the right word. Is she an inspiration? Yes. Is she definitely, you know, do I support the fact that she has come out as trans and that she, you know, is happy the way she is? Yes. I also believe she's doing doing a lot of things for a lot of wrong reasons. And, you know, she's got this new show and stuff like that and everything going on, you know. I think, and not only that, not only that, we take into the fact that she's also a white Republican. So I have my issues with that, especially considering that many white Republicans, including you know everyone that's running for president, does not necessarily support who she is. And <laughs> that one should be obvious. So I find that kind of an interesting sort of thing. Um, but overall, my view about Caitlyn Jenner, I, it was, it's one of those things I will often defend the, tra um, uh, I will often defend the transgender issue. I will, I, I will absolutely go after anybody who is transphobic. As far as many other aspects about Caitlyn Jenner, I really could care less. Because I think that there are better people in the trans community who could better represent it, represent it than Caitlyn Jenner. In fact, I would say Jazz Jennings, to some extent, is probably... For, in fact, no, I will say, Jazz Jennings is a far better person to represent the trans community and trans youth, especially trans youth, in today's modern age right now. And then there's also many other people that um, I think could better represent the people of the trans community because, yeah, I mean, Caitlyn Jenner, he, yeah. So, um, it's like my thinking ball, you know. Uh, yeah. Not much else about that. But what I did also want to touch on, though, now that I'm on the issue about trans issues and stuff like that, there was this video, and I'll put it in the description box, of this woman named um, Rebecca uh, Rebecca Rommel. And um, she's this, this... This is a bit old. This was from actually a couple... Almost a couple months ago when uh, gay marriage got uh, legalized. She's a crazy Christian fucking bigot who starts, you know, starts her video all pissed off and then starts breaking down into tears, you know, saying, oh, I wish it's like, I, it's like I pray in Jesus' name that the Christ, real Christians wake up. Do you even read the same Bible I do? Yes, they read the same Bible as you. The problem is... They interpret it in the way that it should be interpreted, you know, as a whole, and not verse by verse in the typical right-wing fanatical fashion that you do. 
And the whole idea was is that the fact that she went so completely off key, one of the things that she even went so far to say is that it was talking about how the founding, you know, that you know the founding, bring up the founding fathers, which I always love when Christians do. When right-wing Christians bring up the idea of the founding fathers, I like to refer to the Treaty of, uh, you know, I like to refer to the Treaty of Tripoli. Which basically, which basically states, and I paraphrase it rather well, I think, when John Adams said that the government in, of the United States was in no way founded on, Christ, on Christian beliefs or values. Why is that? Because America was founded on secularism. Hence why we have the idea of separation of church and state. Exactly what the Supreme Court basically ruled on they ruled that the state has no business get you know that the uh, whole idea of the state has no business bringing religion into it and denying people their rights religion has no you know because the idea that because lgbt rights is a more of a state issue it's a identity politics it's a political issue Thus, it belongs under state-issued things. Well, human rights, civil rights, all that sort of stuff is a state issue, not a religious issue. Thus, your religion has no right to infringe upon a state issue. In fact, your religious right has no right getting involved in the state-sanctioned ish things anyway. Your religion has no business being in the Supreme Court has no business being in Congress, has no business being, being in the presidency. Which, sadly, a lot of politicians who are very right-wing Christian are trying to push forward, and that a lot of right-wing Christians seem to support. Newsflash, this is a secular country. Just because Christianity is a hegemonic dominant force does not give it a right to try to shove it down the throats of everybody else. This is a country that is founded on the belief that all men are created equal and that we all should treat each other as such. Thus, your religion has no, has no precedence over anybody else's. And thus, should, all other religions should be respected and all non-religions respected as well as the rights of everybody that falls within any of those religions. So, for instance, I have friends that are gay and Christian. I have friends that are trans and Christian. I have friends who are trans, gay, and Christian. And they don't, and their rights do, do not see, uh, their rights should not be infringed. And your, and no matter what your fascist belief is, you have no right to be well to discriminate against them because of who they are you know I love how Christians always like to say that you know being gay is not a choice and um, you know and that it's being gay or trans or anything like that is not a choice well neither is being a bigot or an ass a bigoted asshole and a Christian but you seem to pull that off rather well I mean, the whole video was just this insane ramblings of this woman who just, who basically has come, to, is coming to terms with the reality that her, that her, basically her fascist, bigoted, you know, group of individuals has finally lost has been fighting an uphill battle for years against activists and stuff like that, claiming, oh, that they're going to hell, that they're supporting, you know, sinful behavior and stuff like that, and it's just, and it's just like, well, when have you not sinned about doing something, you know? You know, I love how, you know, she's, how they always try to keep other people down, but it's like, um... <laughs> It's like, well, you're guilty of a lot of different things too, lady. You know. So, it's just... 
I, I just absolutely love it. You know, it, it, it this video, that video just, I watched every last minute of it. It's five minutes I'm never going to get back, unfortunately. But I watched it, and I think y'all will absolutely find it hilarious, too. And for those of you that are fucking fascist bigots like she is, well, most likely also will probably cry along with her. Cry all you want. What's done is done. You can go ahead and say whatever you want to about, about it. It's not going to change. And if you try to change it, well... Fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Just do a video for the fuck of it. Just throw random subjects around. Probably could have done that in my video this past week. But you know what? I like to just do these videos from time to time and stuff like that. Um, more videos will be coming. I am going to do a video soon on the one year anniversary of Ferguson and the bullshit that's going on with that. Um, I have a video that I'm going to basically do about um, anarchists and agorists and libertarian socialists and stuff like that because and the, breaking down the whole idea of that because I came across a, well you'll, you'll understand when I make the video eventually. Um, and then there's a few other things that I do want to get to eventually as well. Um, and will probably get put out within the next week or two. Because I will be starting school on Monday. As of the upload, the Monday after the upload date of this video. So, um, yeah. Don't know how much I will be getting, getting done, but we will see what happens. And I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. I love you guys. Uh, follow me on Facebook.com slash NorCal Corner, Facebook.com slash NorCal Nick, Twitter.com slash underscore Nick Lucian. Um, follow my Instagram if you want to stalk me there at, uh, I believe it's just at Nick Lucian, but I will make the corrections necessary if it's not. And Tumblr, uh, NorCalCorner.tumblr.com. Uh, hit the subscribe button, like this video. Yeah. So, peace, guys.